Example 53.5. An explosive disposal unit has to find two bombs which are hidden in two cars parked in a lot with five other cars. If the bomb squad only has time to search three cars before the area must be evacuated, what is the probability that none of the three cars randomly searched contains a bomb? Okay, so when I look at this problem, the first thing I need to do is to identify what kind of problem I'm dealing with. It says, what is the probability? So it's clearly a probability problem. And then it talks about three cars being randomly searched. That's three separate events then, right? Each search is an event. There's three searches, so it's three separate events. That's going to make it multiplication rule of probability. Anytime you have more than one event, you're going to have to multiply at some point in the probability process. The fact that all three cars are going to have the same condition, and that is that they do not contain a bomb, this is going to be just a straightforward multiplication rule problem. So let's go ahead and write that out then. We'll look for the probability that none of the three cars has a bomb. None of the three cars has a bomb. That's what we're looking to solve for, right? All right, now that we know this multiplication rule, the next thing to figure out is how many events there are. And that's given by this number three here, right? Because we're gonna search three cars. So we'll have a space for each one of those cars that are gonna be searched. It's important that you use that three there, right? To tell us there's gonna be three probabilities or three events all multiplied together. And it's important that you don't use that three again. If there's a three in this problem, it must come from somewhere else, right? So this three is used up here. We do not use it again unless, of course, something appears in the problem that has a three in it separate from this three that's already been used up to give us the three probabilities that we have to multiply. Okay, so from there, our next step is to identify what each of these spaces represents. And, of course, this first space represents the first search, the first car I search. This is the second search, and this is the third car I search, right? So what we're going to say about this space is that it is the first search, and how do we want that first search to turn out? Well, we want the first search, search to be a bomb-free car, right? A bomb-free car, a car that does not have a bomb. And then, of course, that's the probability of that. That's what we're looking for to go into that space, right? The probability that the first search is a car that does not contain a bomb. Okay, so getting it down to just basic probability now, because remember, we're at the single fraction level here when we work at each one of these spaces. Each one of these spaces is just a sim single basic probability fraction. And to fill those in, we're going to use that classic number of over total. It always goes back to that, right? Number of over total. So in this case, it's going to be number of cars without a bomb, right? Over the total number of cars. Okay, so to help us solve this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a picture of what's going on in the parking lot, right? And a little picture, nothing fancy, but I'll just do, you know, seven rectangles, right? Why seven? Let's talk about that before I get to seven rectangles. It says, an explosive disposal unit has to find two bombs which are hidden in two cars. Okay, so there's two cars that contain a bomb, and they're parked in a lot with five other cars, right? So if there are five cars without a bomb and two cars with a bomb, it's a total of seven cars in the lot. So I'm just going to draw seven little boxes to represent the cars. And we don't need to do this, but it's a nice visual aid to help us you know, visually see what's happening in the parking lot here. So two of them are going to have a bomb. I'm going to draw like a little bomb here for each one, right? So here's two cars that have bombs, let's say. Okay, so it's a, a silly little drawing, but it'll help us visualize what's happening in the problem, right? So when I look at the parking lot I've drawn, I'm going to ask, how many cars are without a bomb? That's the first thing I have to do to fill in this fraction. Because remember how we want this fraction to turn out. We want none of the cars we search to have a bomb. So this is the probability the first search yields a bomb-free car, a car without a bomb. So how many cars are without a bomb? One, two, three, four, five cars without a bomb. How many total cars in the parking lot? The total number of cars is seven. OK, good. Now we're on to the next fraction. So the next fraction is going to be the second search, right? The second search. So they search the first car, they didn't find a bomb, they come back, they search another one. Second search, and how do we want it to turn out? Well, none of the cars are supposed to have a bomb. So the second search uh, finds another bomb-free car, right? 
right? Another bomb-free car, a car without a bomb. And we're looking for the probability that that happens. So again, what's the fraction going to be? Well, it's going to be number of cars left, right, in the lot without a bomb over the total number of unsearched cars. Isn't that correct? I mean, that's what's happening here, right? They're not going to search a car twice. If they already searched it and realized it didn't have a bomb, they're going to sort of check that off the list, right? So let's imagine, for example, they decided to search this car just for argument's sake on the first search. So that car is out of the running. We're not going to look at that again. So when we go to answer this probability fraction, we're going to say, hey, number of cars left in the lot without a bomb. How many cars are left in the lot without a bomb? Looking at our drawing, it's one, two, three, four cars left without a bomb. How many cars are unsearched? How many cars were not searched yet? Well, before this happened, it was one, two, three, four, five, six cars that had not been searched, right? So this is a dependent case, which means we need to adjust the probability for the second fraction because something has happened in the first that affects the second, right? Somebody's not going to research a car that's already been searched. So because of that, you know, we know that there'll be less cars left in the lot to search, and there'll be less cars that don't have a bomb since the first one didn't have a bomb. All right, good. So at this point, after that search, right, say we search this car, then we go on to the next fraction. And of course, you know, dot, 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 you know what's going to happen. This is going to be another fraction. And you could actually just fill it in because the pattern is what? We reduce the numerator and denominator by one. That's all you have to do, really. And let's make sure that makes sense. It would be, again, for this fraction, it would be the number of cars left in the lot without a bomb. For this fraction, it's basically the same thing. So how many cars are left without a bomb? Well, we searched two of them that didn't have bombs already. So how many cars are left without a bomb? One, two, three. How many total number of unsearched cars? Well, since we had already searched two, the unsearched cars at that point were five. So three-fifths is the probability. And that's it. Then from there, we just multiply this out. So five times four is 20 times three gives you 60. And then uh, six times five is 30 times seven is 210. You could uh, cross off these zeros, you get six over 21. Three goes into that twice and goes into that seven times. So it's two sevenths, and if you wanna know what that is as a decimal, let's see, two divided by seven is about 29%, so it's approximately 0.286, so about 29%. And that means that there are higher odds, obviously, that when they do this search of three cars, they'd find at least one that has a bomb, right? Because this is the chance that none of them have a bomb. The chance that they would find at least one car that has a bomb is the complement of this, what's left over, right? So um, an over a 70% chance that they would find um, a, bar, a car with a bomb. But at least we know the probability that when they search three cars that they get no bombs out of the three searches. All right, and that's it. That's the answer to this question.